Roland recently did an article on Practical Sailor because he's replacing his battery bank and he gets down into the nitty gritty of what choices that he's making. Batteries are a super hot topic right now and I just built yet another big 12 volt system. So here's what I would do. Now, let me preface this by saying, the best way to build your boat's electric system is to learn all the things for yourself and specifically build what's going to suit you best. But if you're anything like me, you learn a lot from watching what other people do on similar boats. And while Roland does things a certain way and he's completely right, I would do things a little bit different. When I built Lady K's system back in 2018, I was on a strict budget. So a lot of the decisions I made were to get the most bang for buck as I possibly could on a live aboard sailboat. Since then, I've helped spec out and install systems on I think six other sailboats now, one trawler and even an RV. So with everything I've learned since 2018, here's what I would do today. Lady K is a 35 foot Sparkman and Stevens I designed the system on to account for two people living on board full time with a 2000 watt power inverter running all the time. She has a fridge and freezer, electric autopilot, and a desktop computer, as well as all the camera gear needed to support the Lady K Sailing YouTube channel at the time. She would be considered a slightly higher than average power hungry small monohull. I fit two standard size panels on the back. These are the ones that when they're put together need about six feet by six feet of space. At the time, the best panel of that size in the business was a Canadian Solar uh, 275 watt panel. Today, the same size panels are about 425 watts, which is amazing how far the technology's come. But suffice it to say, Lady K has a total of 550 watts with those older panels. Just barely enough, I found out. For batteries, she has an engine start battery in position one on the one two off switch. The engine battery is a normal marine quality lead acid 100 amp hour unit and is still healthy even today after about 10 years of use. It barely gets used and it's always full so it's more of a backup battery to start the engine in an emergency. The house bank locker will hold about four normal size batteries and because cost was such a factor back then I went with the most bang for buck option and installed four golf cart batteries Trojan T105s. Now, golf cart batteries have been the go-to for cruising sailboats for probably 50 years because they're so reliable and hard to break. They're designed to be used all day long in electric golf carts and heavily discharged every day and then heavily recharged. And Trojan, the company who makes most of them, has gotten so good at making them over several decades. Each battery is six volts and 225 amp hours. That's the kicker, you can get Four of them for a thousand bucks though. Cheap and reliable power, but two huge downfalls here. They're six volt and they're lead acid. So we have to wire two of them together to get 12 volt and 225 amp hours. Then a second pair added in, those wire together as well at 12, 225. And we get a total of four batteries at 12 volt and 450 amp hours, but they're lead acid. They can only be discharged to 50%. So real world, we get 225 usable amp hours at 12 volt for about a thousand bucks. While you're here, don't forget to read Roland's article on our website because there's no right answer to which batteries to buy and you should read everyone's opinions before you make any decision. Learn everything you can. Be a sponge. I'll link that article in the description. So rebuilding Lady K's system today, I would do it different. Not because the tech has changed all that much, which it has, but because I can afford to do a little bit better now. The one thing I wouldn't change is that engine start battery. I would replace it with a new one, but I wouldn't change the tech. I'd still go for a lead acid 100 amp hour unit, likely a sealed design like an Optima six pack. And there's a reason I would keep this lead acid. The alternator on the engine is only designed to work with lead acid. So to keep from breaking anything, you need a lead acid battery on the boat but I would get rid of my one, two off switch. Right now it points the engine's alternator at the single lead acid star battery or at the golf cart house bank or at both. We're going to add lithium so we can't let the engine see those or stuff is gonna break. So we'd never use the switch. 
lead acid battery wired to the engine, it's time to replace the house bank. The last system I built was lithium and I used lie time 300 amp hour units that cost about a thousand bucks each. These worked really well and I have really good experience with this brand. Lithium is good for about 80% discharge. So while we got 225 usable amp hours for a thousand dollars with the golf carts, now our thousand dollars gets us 240 usable 12 volt amp hours. And the single 300 amp hour lithium unit is smaller and lighter than the four golf cart batteries, way lighter. But with the engine no longer hooked up to the house bank, we still want the alternator to provide a charge. And since we can't hook it to lithium, we add a DC to DC charger between the battery banks. When it sees that engine battery is full and above 13.2 volts, meaning the engine's running, it starts using it to charge the house bank. When you shut off the engine, it stops. If we use all of our 240 available amp hours in this lithium battery, our 550 watts of solar we already have will fully recharge them in about five hours of direct sunlight, which is conveniently exactly what we get every day. This is a very balanced and effective system. It provides for a fridge and freezer and a 2500 watt inverter that you can use all day every day. Lady K already has a Victron battery monitor, but if I was to do it again today, I probably wouldn't have bothered. I love the little screen because it allows me to see every draw, what's going in and out of the batteries at all times. But in my most recent build, I found that I no longer use the little screen. The Victron app that they have now for your phone and your tablet is so much better than that little screen. I found myself looking at the little screen once in a while and needing more information. So I would open the app anyway. I may as well not even bother with the screen. And it's an expensive little screen. It's much cheaper to just buy the Bluetooth shunt and get the app on your phone. Now we can also scale this system fairly easily if you have a bigger boat or more power needs. If we want another thousand dollars spent, we can add a second 300 amp hour lithium battery and double our capacity, assuming it fits in the battery locker, which on my boat, I think it would. We can update the solar panels to today's model, same size, but the wattage jumps from 550 to 850. We could also add a couple bendy panels on the Dodger or on the deck and get up to a thousand watts pretty easily. A thousand watts will make about 400 amp hours at 12 volts every day. And the two batteries we'd be carrying about 480 usable amp hours. So it's still pretty balanced. When people ask me today to help them with a system, the answer is generally the same. Get as many solar panels as you can fit on the boat comfortably and as much lithium as you can afford. A thousand watts of solar and 600 12 volt amp hours is a huge amount of power. And if you're a normal boat, then that shouldn't leave you really wanting for anything. What do you guys think? Would this system work for you? What did you do differently with your systems? Let everyone know in the comments and don't forget to give this video a like if you like talking about batteries. Give it a like if you have no idea what I'm talking about and hit subscribe so you can join us next time. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.